Yo. How's it going? Yeah, we uh we turned all that stuff off for these streams. Yeah, as you guys can see, this stream is uh sponsored by Autodesk. So uh yeah. You'll notice we um you guys can't hear music, right? Because yeah, we can't play music. So you have to uh play your own music. Yeah, why so angry? I'll give you the uh, we'll give you the headstand next stream you're on. Commands aren't turned off. <laughs> yeah, we also don't have the uh, the chat on the stream as well on the screen. I mean, just to keep it a bit more a bit more professional, I guess. Wait, Chernobyl, when did that command come in? Yeah, you guys can still you you can still gather your points. You just can't spend it on most of the funny shit yet. Uh, Houdini isn't really used for modeling, is it? Um, for procedural stuff in environments, sure, but not for like my sort of job. Not many modelers know Houdini. Yeah, we'll uh we'll give a few minutes for people to come in. We can chill for a bit. Oh, you guys can talk about whatever you want. It's just not going to appear on the uh, on the stream. But yeah, we obviously can't have the same debates we always have. Where's my Autodesk crew shirt? That's a good question. No, I, I don't I don't work for Autodesk. This is uh they're just they're sponsoring a few streams. I I don't represent Autodesk. Hey Orlando, thanks for the follow. Like I'll still read out like subs and follows and stuff like that, but we turned the uh we turned the notifications off as well. Because all these streams are gonna be uploaded to uh YouTube as well, so people can watch them all. Which is also why we don't have music on. Because we don't have like the rights to the music. Nah, Sky Zari, that that wouldn't happen at all. There's there's no chance you can use it on the sly and people won't notice. Yo, Gary Visuals, thanks for the follow. Why do you uh why do you have to use the program though? Yeah, we'll give it another minute or two for people to come in, and then I'll uh, I'll explain what we're gonna do. Crimson Plaque is still not up on the wall yet. Yeah, I know. I need to. I haven't been to like a Home Depot place yet. Maya is so tough. It's been a few days. Man, I take it takes way longer than a few days to learn a program, man. But don't you'll get it. You uh, you have no choice. The plaque. Yeah man, we've got the uh we've got the plaque here. Yeah. Why is learning curve isn't easy? It's not too bad. Yo, how are you doing, Crimson? How is it living in Canada now? Autodesk stream? Yeah, this is the first Autodesk stream. Which will have his head. Yo, alright, so, uh. Yeah, we're gonna be doing a series of streams, 
And we're going to be doing a production film asset, right? But we don't really... Yeah, thanks for the shout out, Chernobyl. So um, we don't really have much time to do it. So what we're going to be doing is... I also need to own everything in the stream. So I'm going to be rebuilding one of my concept meshes. Like, this isn't a good film mesh at all. Like, this topology is gross. So, what we're probably going to be doing is... Well, probably, we are going to be doing it. We're going to be rebuilding this as a production mesh. But we only have limited time. So, how long... How many hours would it take to model this ship? If you were to model this properly, you would probably be on this for, like, at least three weeks, I think. I don't know if we can fit UVs in. Probably not. I don't... I'll try and keep the entire process on stream. Like, it kind of defeats the purpose of my idea if I work on this off stream. So the the general idea is we're going to try and... Yo, Kenyon Swift, thanks for the, uh, the four months, man. I appreciate it. Welcome to the uh, stream. But yeah, what we're going to be doing is we're going to try and do this in 25 to 30 hours, which isn't, that's not long at all. Yo, Chernobyl, thanks for the gifted subs, man. I appreciate it. Yo, Percy Paints, thanks for the follow. But yeah, so to do that, we're going to pick and choose where to fight our battles. Like, this is pretty accurate of what it is like to work in industry. Like, a lot of the time, we don't really get the time we need to... It's not like a personal project. You can't just keep working on something until you, you're you happy with it. You get a certain amount of bid days and you have to finish it within the time frame. So, like, picking your battles is really important in the film industry. And, like, taking shortcuts without sacrificing the quality is a big thing. So that's why, like, kit bashing in general is a very important thing. So in saying that, I'm going to bring in my uh, my kit. Because fortunately enough, with this, um, with this design I have, uh, get. fortunately I have a sub D version of a lot of the pieces. So I'm going to bring my sub D kit in. Do arcade. Is it one? Thanks for the uh, the Twitch Prime. I appreciate it. Yeah, so like, to save time, kit bashing is incredibly important. So fortunately, I have very similar parts on here to my sub D kit, so this will uh, this will definitely help. Like fortunately, like here for example, I have this pretty bad piece, but I have like a, I have a nice sub D version of it as well. So we can kind of kit bash with pre-existing stuff like that. Okay. Scam train. Oh, the the Twitch the Twitch thing, yeah. So yeah, usually what happens is with um with three with concept now, like three D models are starting to be a lot more common. We can see a lot of greebles and pipe details here in Studio. Every artist have their own kit. Um, yeah, studio studios will usually invest into their own libraries of pieces. Like, it's always, like, it's not iconic stuff, it's always very subtle. Like, for example, if you want to have, like, a detailed cylinder, you, there's no point of really building it if it doesn't really matter that much. There's plenty of, like, pre-existing cylinders you can kind of use. Yo, Fugacino, thanks for the, uh, the tier one, I appreciate it. Would I be talking about what's good topo and bad topo as you model the pieces? I mean, yeah, probably. Can you use parts of models I made at work for your own kibash? No way. It's studio property. Nothing can nothing can leave the studio. So like I don't have any of my personal stuff at work and I don't obviously very obviously don't take any of my work stuff home. So this is all my own personal stuff. You have to make everything. Very hype, such stream well. Wow. Yeah, thanks, Jerome. Yo, Yannick, thanks for the follow. And Ryan Hart, thanks for the follow. So yeah, as I was saying, with like concept now, 3D is very normal. So it's very, very normal for us to get a 3D concept model from the uh, concept artist. 
Like even though they paint on it, they usually also send the file. So usually the first thing I do, we get our kit, no not the kit, we get our concept mesh. Oof. Uh, I'll just rename it concept mesh. And then we bring the concept mesh into the scene. And the first thing you want to do is like set up the scene. So like all studios have like a universal scale used within each studio. So I usually just bring a person in so I can see visually what the scale is. And the very first thing you do is you kind of get it to roughly the right scale. Depending on, like, if you get, like, a scan from on set, usually it comes with a 1 meter cube, which you can align with the uh, the default Maya cube for 1 meter. But obviously we don't have that, it's so concept art. So we're going to roughly do this. Like, the thing is, you want to get this stuff sorted, like, at the very start. You don't want to have, like, a really random scales. But that looks pretty accurate. I also want to put it, like, on the floor. Or at least close to. And then the very obvious one is you want it you want it in the middle. I mean I know mine is in the middle. If it was off on the side, you'd obviously try and get it in the middle. So yeah, we have our concept mesh. Usually when the concept mesh comes in, it's all combined into one object. So usually what I do is I extract faces to separate objects. I mean there's diff there's many different ways of, of separating meshes in Maya. But mine's already extracted. So all my pieces are all separate. Yeah, so we have our little person. We're going to leave him just here. Just like as a reminder of scale pretty much. So yeah, this is all like setting up stage. So we also have our, we have our kit. Maybe scale it down to a more reasonable size. I usually just put it off to the side. Like it depends like sometimes how you want to do it. Sometimes I'll have a kit just in a separate Maya file. I mean, if my main scene gets too heavy, and then I'll just copy and paste by, like objects between the two files. But this scene's not that heavy, so it's all right. How's it going? Is yes, yeah, the first order to stream. Do you draw out the design of a ship first, or figure out as you go? Um, what do you mean? I'm not a concept artist. I'm a production modeler. The sun's strong inside? What do you mean? Oh. Yo, channel was everything going alright on the stream? You need to apply scale after you've scaled it down. I mean, yeah, sure. I, The thing is, I have a lot of custom hotkeys. So I already actually did it as a hotkey. <laughs> I, have, I usually use Control F to freeze the transforms. Cool, so we have this. So I have a um I have concept art as well. Which like the problem is like you'll get like a painting sometimes, but you don't know how much the concept artist has modified the painting. So what we usually do is we, we get the uh we get the spaceship where we want it, right? Yeah, that's, that's close enough in the middle. Now I'm just going to create a camera. Look through that camera. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the uh, the image of... Where is it? Exports. There you go. So this is just a painting I did. I'm pretty sure the focal length is 35. We're going to be guessing. This stuff takes a little bit of time to set up. So what I like to do is I have isolate... Oh, what's this? Yo, channel, well, thanks for the gifted sub, man. I appreciate it. Yo, we've got 100 people here already. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. So the reference is always correct in scale. Uh, what do you mean by that? I don't know what you mean by uh, correct and scale. But you have this thing in Maya called isolate select, which is this. So if you select an object and then you click that, it'll isolate whatever you select. So I've got that actually set up as a hotkey, which is like the tilde key. So what I like to do is I will select my camera and isolate select my camera. 
and that hides everything else. I'm just going to turn off the grid for a sec. So I can tab that really quickly to kind of see how my image like roughly lines up. So the annoying thing with like getting like concept from work is we usually don't know if the concept artist has warped the image or manipulated it at all. So it's usually pretty hard to line this up perfectly. Like depending on what studio you're at, sometimes the VFX supervisors will be like super picky. But I'm the supervisor in this situation, so I'm not going to be super picky with it. Because mostly the information I just get from this is like where the panel lines are. So as long as I can roughly see the panel lines, it's probably good enough for me. But obviously at work, you would get a bit more time. So I would probably spend a bit more time on this. But for this example, I'm not going to worry too much about it. But yeah, the, ta the tilde key, well not tilde key, setting up your hotkey for isolate select and spamming it is a super good way of seeing like inconsistencies across like concepts and stuff. But that's probably good enough. But yeah, once you've got the camera down, Make sure you lock it. There's nothing worse than like moving your camera afterwards. And then go back to, back to the first camera. I'm gonna get this, go to attribute editor, and then image plane, and we're just gonna go looking through camera. So then it only we can only see it through the camera like that. Yeah. So that's it so far. We've set up the base. Actually, no, I'll do something else first. I'm gonna, I usually like doing this quite a lot. I'll select my concept mesh and I'll assign a new material. And I'm gonna make it, you can do whatever color you want. I usually just make it like a red or something like that. Something, something kind of subtle. Just so like as I'm building on top of it, I remember what is the concept mesh and what isn't. Yeah, so this is how I, I set up the general environment so far. Back with quality streams. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's save it. We're going to make sure you save it first. That's always important. Um, let's see. What's the chat saying? Do the concepts artists give you a size comparison or are you more guessing how big it is? I'm kind of guessing how big it is based on a person compared to the cockpit. So that seems like a very reasonable scale. But they might have a little person next to the image, not always. Alright, so we have the scene set up. I'm going to quickly refill my water and uh, go to the restroom and then we can start the actual modeling. Yeah, people that uh that watch the stream quite a lot know they like to get up and walk around quite often. I think that's super important at work, like every 20, 30 minutes, just get up. Because uh, we sit in front of computers for a pretty long time. You're here, what did you miss? Uh, not much. We're still just kind of setting up the scene at the moment. What happened to Railgun?
All right, so usually like the first thing I like to do is try and see what I can steal from the concept mesh. Like there's a lot of stuff usually that like not everything will be good, but there's a lot of stuff we could probably take. Like even though this topology is not the best, we can still kind of use a lot of this stuff. So usually the first thing I do is kind of look at what I can steal. So we can probably take this stuff. This stuff is like, the topology is not amazing, but it's at least a decent thing we can use. That we could probably use. And I'm only just going to take one side of it. Actually, all this stuff is kind of decent. Oh, we take that one. So I'm just going to use Control G, group it, and then Shift P and put it out into the world. So I'm probably going to, it's always important to be like organized where you work. So I'm just going to call this one like L underscore panels. Underscore group. So it depends what side you like to work on. I personally prefer working on the left side, but it doesn't really matter at all. What am I looking for on the mesh that makes it usable? Um, it's usually the more very simple shapes. Like say for example, this I could take and turn this into a sub D mesh pretty easily. This on the other hand is incredibly broken. So I wouldn't want to use that one. So it's more like just seeing what I can reuse. Um, like this stuff is all pretty, it's usually the more simple stuff, I guess. Put these out, our panels. And I'm kind of grouping it based on what they are. And we're still going to like heavily modify them. It's not necessarily that we're going to just leave them as they are. We're probably going to, like say for example, the bevels here are pretty bad. But like what we can do is, we go to face mode. Probably get rid of the bottoms. So we'll fix the topology later, but we can kind of use this as like the base for this panel. Oh, that's right, different hockeys now. So because we're going to use this as like a normal thing, I'm just going to give it a default shader now. In the film production, you want every detail without normals. We don't really use normal maps in the film. What about quad drawing over it? You could do that, but this is kind of easier to just simply like, I would just draw this. I mean, I'll go into more work later, but you can kind of draw this a lot nicer. Damn, all the uh, all the pieces is like slowing down my ma my uh, machine. So fortunately, my uh, my com my concept mesh already was broken into left, right, and center, so I know I can just get rid of that, which helps. Yeah, we want L panels. These ones. Oh, I don't want any of this stuff. All oh, this stuff is kind of pretty usable. Just going to give it the uh, another Lambert shader. Can you make this aircraft in ZBrush? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know why you would have... I mean, you technically can if you want, but I don't know why you would want to. Damn, it's a lot of pieces. So this, I already know, I have a sub version of that, so I can just simply use that one here. Andrew and Zebra, no, it's got nothing to do with, um, it's just there's no reason, oh, wrong hockeys. There's just no reason to uh, use ZBrush.
So what I might do is, I know this is the center of the cylinder. So what I'll probably do is I'll just create a uh, locator and snap the locator with V to the center. So now I always know anytime I'm working on this, I can just snap to this. And I'll probably just leave that there. So I know like with this, I can snap that to here. And then now I know it's going to be in the center. Cool. So we can probably get rid of all this. So yeah, at work you might have like a pre-existing thrust that you can probably use and like modify to uh, be quite similar. What are you guys talking about? In studio, if I don't use a tablet, do other people will mock you? No, no, it doesn't matter at all. No, tablet is like personal preference. I, I think using tablet is a good idea. Just to uh, prevent things like wrist pain and stuff like that. We can probably, we can use this one as well. I'm going to get rid of my extra materials actually. So. Gonna give these. A Lambert. Just for the, uh, just for the stream. We can have the red man. There you go. Standard Andrew stream. Was the thruster piece already sub D from the kibash? So this is my sub D kit and I already had a sub D version of it. So it was pretty easy for me to replace that one. But like at work, we might have like a pre-existing thruster we could kind of take and modify. Conveniently, this one happens to be the exact same one. So I can just use that. Oh, that's getting in the way of the thruster. Do we need Fix that. So usually when I start, I kind of do the easiest stuff first. Well, wrong one. If the model has damaged like scratches, do you model that? Um, depends. If like, say for example, there's scratches on here and you see the camera this close, then sure. But usually not, usually like textual have that. Mm. I'm not a big fan of how high res is glasses, but what I might do is just like use mesh reduce to kind of lower the poly count. Like something like this is actually pretty nice. So I'll do this sometimes, like I'll take the concept mesh. I mean, this needs to be fixed, obviously. But I'll take the concept mesh and try and like maybe run mesh reduce on it, see how that looks. There is like an interior part to it. We can just get rid of that. We'll give it a thickness again later, but this is just thing. I also do like to have different materials based on what things are. So I'll probably just have like a uh, like a glass material, just so I can visually see like what is glass. Imagine being responsible for making a making trash in a movie and being like, hey, I made trash. That's fair enough. <laughs> I mean, we make debris all the time. Um, what are you guys talking about? Yeah, if we won't, the kit bash will come later. I can probably hide that actually. But first, I want to get rid of all the extra shaders. So I'm just going to go to the hyper shade and do that. Delete, unused modes. Free food and you're fine. Don't say that. Yeah, what I also probably, I also usually do, but I, I didn't do it this time, I forgot, is I'll get my concept mesh, 
And I'll add it to a layer. Call it concept layer. So now everything in that group, I can turn it off and on very easily and see what I'm kind of left with. So I want this to be... Let's just call this material. Uh, panels. Do I want to show my reel before I start? I probably can't because we don't have the rights to that stuff, I guess. I mean, people can always look up my reel in the chat, but I, I'll, I'll keep it off the stream to be safe. But yeah, what I also might do is, like, I don't need any of this subdivision, so I might... Uh, okay, that didn't work, as I thought it would. I might just get rid of these edge loops just to make it lower poly, I guess. Because I know, based on my concepts, that I need to add some panel lines in that are missing from the concept mesh. Like, I need to add these in. So I'd rather... I'm kind of using this as just, like, a base to do this. So we don't really need all these extra edge loops. So I kind of do just take the concept mesh and clean it up a little bit. Get rid of everything. It doesn't have to be super perfect, but yeah, even, no, I need that one. Yeah, so in a way, I kind of just used the concept mesh as, like, instead of just rebuilding it, I kind of just took away from what was already there. Oh, I need to unlock this stuff, don't I? The panel details won't be done by displacement. No, I, I personally always like to have the panels modeled in. It's always much better, I feel. Just because it also gives the texture. It drives texture a lot easier. I'm just going to take this panel off. While I clean up this panel stuff, I might just turn that off. So it just it's just out of the way. Oops. Oh, it's connected here still. So like this is already a pretty decent base. Maybe I could just probably just go merge verts. Oh no, it's gonna go down, isn't it? I won't do that then. Do I get to make that decision or does the soup decide? Um in film, like poly count usually isn't a problem for us, so usually we add the panels. The only times like we would even have that discussion, excuse me, is if the um, the vehicle is going to be seen from a distance, then we might do that. But we might have that discussion if it's going to be seen from a distance. But I'm kind of doing this as more of like a hero vehicle, so. I want to model panels in. Would I mind sharing my hotkeys? Um, sure. Do you... I'll leave those edges there. Hmm. Cannibal, do we have a, do we have a, uh, a shortcut for our hotkeys? I know where it is located on my art station, but I kind of want to go to it right now. Yo, how's it going? Let you make one? Alright, sick. Yeah, but the thing is, my, my hockeys are all custom. Like, the hockeys themselves don't really matter that much. It's personal preference on what you want. Like, I think everyone should have their own custom hockeys. See, so yeah, kind of what I'm doing right now is just taking, like, existing stuff 
we can use. And just make it a bit nicer, I guess. Because I know we need to cut panels into this stuff later. Instead of just keeping the thickness there, it's much easier to put it back down to a single plane. And then we can cut through this much easier. So you guys can't hear music, right? Alright, cool. That's good. I just have music playing. But obviously we can't have it on the stream. I'll leave that one for now. I just want to focus on mainly getting the uh, the basic panel shapes first. That spread isn't too bad, actually. I might leave that like that. So, we will build an interior, but we don't obviously have much time. So, we're probably going to block something out, like very basically. Unless you're actually going to properly see the interior, we usually kind of build something very proxy. We don't usually worry too much about that sort of stuff. Like, usually just a chair. It's more so you can see, like, silhouette and stuff like that. Gonna get rid of that. Um, it's important to have cords all over the model without tries or ingons. I think it's usually better just to keep it clean and efficient. It's always better to be clean and efficient in production because someone else is gonna, it's gonna bother someone else at some point. How did I delete the edges in a second? All right, I'll show you. So what you have is if you select one edge and then you go control, right click to edge loop utilities, to edge loop and delete. What it will do is it'll, if you select one edge and it will run along the full thing and delete the vertex as well. Or you can select it to just select the edge like that. So I just have that set up as a hockey. So I have control E to get rid of it and shift E just to select it. Someone has a question regarding schooling. Um, what do they say about schooling? You suggest someone study 3D art in university. I mean, the reality is like you don't really need a degree to do this job at all. But like degrees will help with um, visas. So it depends. It depends also the how you learn. Like I personally am self-taught. But I have pretty decent like self-drive. If you don't really have that self-drive, schooling might be a better option. Just because when you're surrounded by heaps of other students, it kind of gives you like the, uh, the push. Can't you just double click the edge to select the loop? I mean, you can, but it's much easier just to do something like this and get rid of all of that instead of double click, shift double click. Like, this takes much longer than just simply just doing that and get rid of it. Also, I used to, before I used the hotkeys, I found it much easier to do this. So if you know that you have this right, if you know with, within the submenu where, oh shit, where the other stuff is, you can kind of, like, cut, you can kind of cheat it, you can go straight to the next one. So you can kind of just do like a tick to get rid of it, which is kind of cool, if you know where that is. Oh, this is super basic. Brilliant. So yeah, before we really get like stuck into like modeling, usually like the first thing I'll do is just see what I can salvage from the concept mesh and take it and group it. So we have, what's this? Put that in the L panels. 
So th we always work in like left and right as well. So make sure you have everything in organized that way. Because it also, it makes it much easier to just simply like mirror across. See what your mesh is looking like. As Prussian modeling for film, you earn money by working on a specific project or monthly. Um, it depends on the studio, but it's always, I mean, it's, it's not per project, it's per, depends what studio and country you live in. Sometimes it's like two weeks, sometimes it's four, monthly. Uh, I've been in a studio that paid weekly, that was quite nice. But yeah, it's always paid by, um, you're not paid for the project, you're paid monthly or bi-weekly. Depending on the studio. Um, yeah. That mesh is pretty bad. These things are pretty simple, we can probably take those. Actually, I think I have something like that already. Ah, oh, conveniently I do. Alright, that's cool. Oh, I have some of this stuff as production ready, that's, that's very handy. Alright. Do I have something like that? Oh, I do. Awesome. Alright. We won't worry about that for now. That is that. Yeah, I'm kind of just getting, getting rid of a lot of the stuff we don't really need. We always work, you know, symmetrical anyway, so you don't really need anything that's on the other side. The rubber seals themselves are pretty simple. I mean, it's probably much easier to just fix that topology than start again. So I'm going to probably grab all the rubber seals. But since this is in the middle, I'm going to put it in like a center group. So see... And then grab the left rubber seals. Yeah, even though I am taking this stuff from the concept mesh, it doesn't mean it's kind of like good to go. It means we still need to work on it, but at least it's like much easier than like starting again. Um, or rubber. Um. Film production don't typically hire for stuff. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Oh, you might have accidentally selected through the mesh to the mesh to the edge loops behind it. That might be what you did. Yeah, so we can. Uh, I might give the rubber seals their own material as well. So usually when I work, I like to make things colored, just that, so it's not like boring looking at gray cubes constantly. Pull this one out, uh, rubber. Isn't that pain to organize while modeling because all of the transforms created in the outliner? What do you mean? All I, when I have organized, when I say organized, I don't mean like anything too crazy. I mean more just like keeping things like left and right together. So I'll put like the L rubber and L things together into like the L underscore group and the C underscore group. At like you don't have to be like super organized, but the the main stuff like this I think is really important. Because it, it's you need to know what you can quickly flip across. Use a box select and went through. Yeah. Yeah like don't when I say be organized, I don't mean like don't stress about like every single cube you make, putting it into the group immediately. Just keep it between like left and right. Um, do you come from this aircraft idea or just director told you how to really do it? My question is really how they come with ideas. Oh, so we usually get the approved concept from the client. So we just make it. We know this is the design they want, so we just make the design. 
So I know the top and the bottom are symmetrical. I'm going to leave this now, but I'm not going to actually work on that one because we can just work on the top one. Same with this side. We know this is symmetrical as well. We probably, we can use this, but I'll probably just clean that up a bit. In that case, I'll probably just get rid of one side. And take it out. You're still confused, but how? What do you mean? The, um, the client have given us the concept and we make the concept. Um, this one we can use. Panels. That's actually pretty usable to be fair. We'll probably leave that. That's definitely. So also in the this happens quite a lot in the concept as well. Like we'll get a concept mesh that's not rendered from the specific angle. So it will have it'll be empty. So it'll be up to us to fix this gap ourselves. And something like this, penetrating into this, isn't good. So we'll have to change that ourselves. This is pretty normal for like us. We'll get concept art. We'll get a concept mesh, but it's not um, it's not complete. It just looks good from the uh, from the angle it was intended. Yeah, and what, something I know a lot of people like doing is like they like to get stuck into the details and stuff, but we won't worry about that for a while. We'll definitely focus on like the big shapes. The big shapes are always what's important. Yeah, this isn't lining up too perfectly, but um, I can still use this to get the general idea of where the, the panel lines are. Well, the first hour has already gone by. That's crazy. We only just started. But yeah, make sure you save as well. And save incrementally because you don't wanna you don't want your supervisor to come around and you're like, Yeah, I have nothing to show because I lost six hours of work. It blows my mind that each studio that worked on Thanos had to create their own version of Thanos but it all looked identical. Um, I don't know. The things with like sharing assets between different Studios is they have their own technical pipelines and that sometimes can get in the way and cause problems. Yeah, to be fair, with a lot of this sort of stuff, I can probably just run mesh reduce on it to get a pretty decent low res version. So I'll do this quite often actually. Like I'll run mesh reduce on the concept mesh to at least get the basic shape if it doesn't explode too much and then I can use this give that one as well details we'll worry about later Yeah, we've been going for 30 minutes. I'm going to have a, a quick stretch. I'll be back in two secs.
What are you guys talking about? But yeah, usually on usually on stream we do like handstands and shit like that, but uh, we we won't do that on the audio stream. Perks of working with other three D artists in the office. I mean, oh, we have all, all these followers. I didn't notice. Yo, Doug TV, thanks for follow. V Slayer, thanks for follow. The Moderator, thanks for follow. Dayless? And Lepax, thanks for follow as well. Perks of modeling with other 3D artists in the office. I mean, to be fair, like, I do, like, because we're working from home these days, like, I do miss having, like, people around me to work with. There's a nice kind of like energy to working in the office with people. And usually it's much easier like if I have a question or a problem to just go and talk to the person I need to. Uh, I'll put this on the C one. That one we can use. Yeah, so a lot of what we'll probably be doing today is kind of just salva salvaging the, uh, the concept mesh. As much of it as we can, at least. Because already we have a nice base. Instead of manually modeling this stuff, we at least kind of have like a foundation to start from. That's not too bad. Like, this is very basic topology. If you want to work in film, you have to eventually learn Maya. That is facts. Yeah, Maya, Maya is the industry standard for the film industry, for sure. Uh, we could probably use this. God, this topology is awful. But, like, the thing is, for a concept artist, this doesn't matter. So, like, don't, don't judge the concept artist topology too much. Not, not their job. Eh, we need to fix that, but we can use that one. Do I have... I think I might actually have something like that. Is that it? Ah, convenient. Alright, so... At work, or like... What I would usually do is I would find lots of different random pieces that were very similar to the general shapes. But fortunately I already have like that as a massive piece. So eventually I'll probably like stick that in there. So do you know your Fausto did concept model? It will be clean polys. Nah, Fausto doesn't have clean polys. It's not a it's not his job anymore. I was talking to, I talked to Fausto a few years ago about like switching to concept and he was saying like the first thing you have to do to be a concept artist is forget you're a modeler. I was like, okay, that's, that makes sense. Because your job isn't to do good topology anymore, it's just to get shapes. We can use this as well. What is the base behind this? Behind this mess. Oh, okay, that's it. We can steal that as well. Yeah, so don't think you always have to start everything from scratch. Like, do find anything you can that will make you save time. So this I already have a piece of. Where is it? This one. Where is the base behind this mess? I know, right? Okay, also the reason why we did, we got like the scale right, we got it in the world origin. Like, the reason we did all that first before touching anything 
is say hypothetically like layout want something or like someone needs something to start we can always just give them the mesh and they can start with something and then as we update it and check it into the pipeline it means it will always work for them if that makes sense like the scale will never change you don't really want the scale to change or like the position you don't want to raise it or lower it that will kind of screw everyone over so communicating that sort of stuff is also important if you do have to change it like make sure you tell the other departments what you're doing oh, okay so it is kind of different so that's this is kind of what i mean like we have like a similar thing it's not exactly the same but it's very similar so we can still kind of use this as like the base This is cut off though. So I'll do this quite a lot. Like I'll take like existing model bits and just modify it. It's not exactly the same. But this is still like a pretty decent start. Instead of starting from nothing, we have this. Some of that should be fine. Do I think the movie industry would use UE5 as rendering? I have no idea. I mean, game engines are definitely making waves, but I'm not really in the position to know too much about that sort of stuff. Oh, that's why I deleted it, didn't I? Um, what's that? What is the best country to have jobs? Bastard's a 3D designer. Well, that, that changes all the time. <laughs> I mean, Canada's pretty good. I mean, yeah, Canada's pretty good. UK is pretty decent. Well, London specifically. Um, depends. Depends what industry you want to work in. Mandalorian uses UE4 for environments. Yeah, Mandalorian has did some pretty cool stuff with the stagecraft thing. What do you guys use for freeze transforms? I use control F just because that's what I I made up my hotkeys like five years ago. So the way I did it, I mean I suppose I can just show people. Uh let's see. Pull up my Google Sheets. So this is how I set my hotkeys up. I just put like all the keys down one side and then put like standard control shift all, all that stuff at the top and then I wrote down the ones I didn't want to change like the, the the basic stuff like you know preview smooth and wireframe mode all that sort of stuff I I left them I wrote them all down and then I saw what I had gaps with and then I just added my own personal hockey so the green ones are my personal ones So it depends entirely on like what you want to do. Yeah, so I just laid out all the keys. So now I always have this. So hypothetically, if I can't, like usually you can get your own hotkeys into the studio. You just let them know. I want to bring my hotkeys in and they'll, depending on their protocol, they'll get it into the studio. And then yeah. If you didn't have that, I have access to this everywhere and I can just manually set my hotkeys up at work. So yeah, this is how I usually do it. 
But yeah, your personal hockeys, it's up to you. You don't like have to use hockeys. Like I know people of you know badass artists that don't use many hockeys, and that well doesn't make them any slower. I personally just like using hockeys. Oh shit. So yeah, when I was saying like be organized, like you can see I'm not being like super organized. I'm just making sure at the very least, like left left and center are still in the right place. Um, what about Blender? What about Blender? Um, Yeah, it depends on the studio. Like sometimes you can bring a USB in and give it to the tech guys and they will look through it and give you access to your hotkey file. Um, like using, as far as like using your own custom scripts, that gets a bit more difficult though. Because then like, Technically, anything you do at the studio, they own. So, like, if you're writing your own scripts at work, it's work script now. So that's why it's always hard when people want to bring in their own, like, personal tools and stuff like that. It's hard to justify. Oh, this is nail group. Every now and then, I keep just updating to making sure I can see the... Oh. That's why it's panels, isn't it? Um, doesn't matter what your hockeys are, real artists do pixel art in Minecraft, and there is no hockeys. I mean, it's totally up to you, like, you don't have to use hockeys. Yeah, this is basic enough, we can use... I might just grab these and put them into their own, like, detail group, though. Like, these sets of things are, like, the last thing we work, we worry about. Detail. Yeah, we can use that. We can still probably use that, but I'll just modify it later. Put that into the L detail group. Oh. Do you ever work with Google Drive's file streams? What's Google Drive file streams? I've never even heard of that. Um, that's pretty bad. I think I have a, I think I have a concept thing for that anyway. I'll worry about that later. Yeah, that circle's a bit screwed up, but everything else we can take. So I'll probably put this one in. All this stuff, ugh, it's kind of broken as well. I know, for example, this piece was this one stretched. So I'll probably rebuild it using these components, but try and not destroy it. Is your preview smooth on default value? Uh, I guess so. I haven't done anything. Yo, Sky Zero, thanks for the Prime. Sorry, I don't have notifications on, so it's a bit harder to see stuff. Muted Warrior, thanks for the follow. Dexter, thanks for the follow. Um, it's because you're a mere polygon pusher. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, no worries. It's cool to see we have over 100 people here already. That's pretty cool. So yeah, this is going to be a series of 10 streams. So we're going to try and do this whole aircraft in 10 streams, which will be pretty hard, seeing what they were already almost halfway through the first one. <laughs> no, that's right. Ask, ask all the questions. That's, that's the entire purpose of these streams, is to educate people. So this topology is kind of terrible, but maybe I can use it later. 
that's this is also another sort of thing like we have like intersections like this and holes in the back so we definitely need to like fill those up as we go same with down here we need to fix these problems this i might probably just Do I have one already? No, I might as well just fix this one actually. So we know we only need a small section of this one. So I'll probably just cut this here. Get rid of the bottom. That make a good point about wrist strain. Oh, you guys talking about like tablet? So I'm just kind of like fixing the topology here. Oh, I need to unlock this first. This is some weird normal bug thing. So it's because I imported it and exported it multiple times. Uh, unlock normals. And it's inverted. That doesn't help. Alright, I'm probably gonna, like, when you have, like, a tool like this, and if you press 3, you can see how far this slides, it's not good. When I triple edge stuff, I always make sure I have, like, a supporting edge behind it as well. Obviously that stops it a bit more, but then it's, we still need to, like, bridge this gap. So maybe, like, something like 6 is probably better. Like, something like this is much nicer than what we had before. I don't know if I'm going to uh, UV this thing, but since I'm going to duplicate this one, just in case we do decide to UV, I don't know. I don't know if we'll have time to do UVs. But if we do happen to do UVs, I'm just going to quickly UV this one. So usually I like to use automatic just to see what I get. And wait, why is it like that? Oh shit! I didn't do the other side. All right, we can we can fix this now. So. I usually do automatic, just to see what I get. Automatic is usually pretty decent these days. So I'll probably merge that like that. Okay, that's cool. So what I'm probably going to do is... Actually, I'll probably just do this. Select that edge, get rid of that one, get rid of the edges. And then just redo the, uh, redo the six. Yeah, automatic. Whoa. Oh no, just fine. Yeah, automatic unwrapping in Maya twenty twenty is pretty good. I usually order. I usually do automatic first. Hmm. I did that wrong. I didn't realize it came down that much. All right. So my UVs have changed. Obviously, when we did that. So we can probably just unfold these ones that way. One. So I only did this just so I have like automatic, I have UVs ready to go. I don't need to worry too much about this. We can, it's just in case I UV later, we have uh, one of them UV'd before we duplicate. So anytime you duplicate something, like always UV at first. Uh, let's just close one panel. Um, how do you suggest practicing getting better at concept design? Um, I'm not a concept artist. So <laughs> I don't know how to say that. I would definitely say like looking at the real world helps everyone in CG in general. Like so much of what we do is based on the real world. Like even this spaceship is based on like real cars, real vehicles, stuff like that. Cool, so we have that one, right? And this is where our handy locator comes in. So I'm gonna move this here. 
And how much does this rotate around? So that is 10 degrees. All right. So what I'll probably do, I'll probably do this manually. Well, all this stuff we don't need. We need that. This, whoa. We need this. Oh, no, I got it with my original as well. I forgot to take it out. Cool. So we have our nice little thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to rotate it 10 degrees. Or negative 10. And then if you press Shift D, it'll just repeat what you did before. So if you just keep tapping Shift D, it'll just rotate around. So this is how you can kind of do this on the fly instead of having to worry about going into like duplicate special and stuff like that. There you go. So now we have all this kind of production ready, which is kind of handy. Something like, actually, what does my concept look like? Oh, it doesn't look anything different. All right, in that case, I might make all this production ready as well. I've seen some people do two edges. I suggest not doing two edges. Three edges is always better. Because especially when it comes to like UV seams, like if you UV this and then smooth it. Oh, that's right, this stuff's inverted, isn't it? Unlock. So when it comes to like UV seams, some people try to do two edges, it's not a good idea, because when you smooth it, the UV seam is going to move. So it's always better to have three edges. I'm going to probably just get rid of one of each. And I'm just going to manually triple edge it myself later. Uh, this one. It is moving a little bit, but it's not too bad. So when I triple edge, like one of the cool... like things I use is I use the bevel tool actually. So what happens is if you bevel, uh, I'll show you what I did actually, I went shift right click bevel edge and then you drag this out and then if you put it to, if you turn chamfer off it'll give you a triple edge for you. So it'll be like a 90 degree angle. So this is a very easy way of having consistent triple edging across your mesh. So we got them all done at the same time. Super convenient. And then of course, edges will slide so much. So we need supporting edges. Put one there, one there. Yeah. Yo, Hugo, how's it going, man? Yo, if you guys don't know Hugo's desk, you should definitely uh, check him out. Yo, thanks so much for the, uh, the shout out, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, so same deal. We still, will, edges will slide too much, so we just add some uh, point edge loops. And there you go. That bit's kind of done. Yep, yeah, I'm going to have a quick one minute break again. What about five edges? Yeah, I use five edges technically. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be back in a, a minute.
But yeah, don't forget to uh, go for walks and uh, get up out of your computer. See? Oh, well, out of your chair. Because, uh, yeah, we sit in front of a computer for long times. So uh, make sure you keep moving. Yo, Hugo's desk. Thanks for the six months, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Mark with the K. Thanks for the follow. Um, what do you do for moving parts such as fans on the side? Detach them as a separate part so the animus doesn't have to fiddle with the models. These sorts of things? Yeah, you would keep these as separate objects. To be fair, something like this, the chance of them animating this to rotate is pretty unlikely. Like, it will probably just be seen as, like, details. So, things like this, like these sorts of things, you would kind of keep these things separate, or you could combine them based on, like, where things rotate. Like, you can... I don't know if I even built this thing to move properly. I think it can move a limited amount. But, like, you can combine, like, these sorts of things, because they're all, like, one thing that rotate around... This is also a piece. So they all rotate around this point, but you couldn't combine that with that, for example, because these are two different parts. Unless you didn't want it to rotate here. Yo, how's it going? Yo, we have 124 people here. Yo, thank you so much for, for tuning in, everyone. But yeah, like at work, when I when I first start working on something, I usually pick like the low hanging fruit first. Like, you want a bit of like that, a confident confidence boost when you start a project. Like, don't get too stuck into trying to work out what on earth is going on here because this will just drive you nuts. Just work on like you know, taking as much as you can from the concept mesh stuff like that. Yo, Corvée, how's it going? You wouldn't have missed this? You probably wouldn't anyway, because we're going to upload all this on YouTube. Another Andrew. <laughs> yeah, what I might do is I might do some paneling. Paneling is always fun. So, I didn't line these up perfectly. I probably should have spent a bit more time on it, but for the sake of how... Because we only have like a very limited time to do this on stream. So I didn't spend too long trying to line it up. But what you can do is I like, say for example, I want to work on this panel and I want to see it on top of that. What I'll usually do is I'll select like the camera. So this selects your current camera, which is this. And then I'll select this. Then isolate select. So you just see the one thing. And then you press four to see through it. Obviously, <laughs> it's pretty off actually. But um, usually uh, this is how I would draw panels. But... Because it's so off, <laughs> I might just ignore that and do it this way instead. Some of the other panels are closer. So I'm just going to do this one by eye. At work, we would probably try harder to get it to be more accurate. But I'm just going to do it by eye. You can kind of see the general idea of where your cut is going anyway, which is handy. So we can at least see it's like the same sort of angle, stuff like that. We have a cut there. You can still see where you're selecting, which is cool. So this is, all this is, is the same camera angle as the concept. With the camera selected of the concept and isolate selected. So your selections can still be visible on top of it, which is very cool. So I'm just going to not care about anything but where the... Uh, so it does look a bit closer to that edge. Might just slide this down a bit. You really miss streaming, but I've been looking for a house for eight weeks. Yeah, man. How's your house coming? How's your house looking going, Hugo? Your Mac Pro is a hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of money. But yeah, what I'm gonna do now is just delete all the edges that I don't want. Like you can still keep like the verts where they are, but now I can just visually see where the panels are. 
So this comes up to like roughly here. I can see it here, which is really cool. And alter a bit. I'm just going to do it by eye. That worked out quite nicely. So what I also like to do, if say for example I didn't want to like commit into this yet, I do use creasing as like a modeling tool, not for like the final product. But what you can do is you can crease the edges where your panels are going to be. So I have it as a hotkey. So now I can always see where my panel lines are. So I won't use creasing for the final result, but I can still use creasing to visualize what my paneling will look like before I commit to it. No one except pets? Yeah, that's a, that's a shame. Keepo on Twitch. Thanks for the follow. Eric, um, Sif, Soka, thanks for the follow, everyone. You have one dog and two cats? Man, I want to I wanna pet. Yeah, so this is one method we can use for like working out where our paneling is going to be. We use creasing just to like visualize it. We're not going to use creasing for the final result, but we can kind of just block out. If you look at wireframes, you can see the creasing a lot easier as well. Yeah, it's pretty handy. The higher in the hierarchy, the beefier your computer has to be. <laughs> yeah, Hugo's Hugo's machine is pretty beef. So let's do let's do this one now. I might put this here just so I can visually see where like this ends. So same deal, just isolate, select those. So one comes up and then across. All right. The stream exploded. I don't know. We usually we've had like a hundred and thirty. We had a hundred and thirty views for a while. Oh yeah. So for people who don't know, we got Twitch Partner, which is super awesome. So many thanks to the people that supported me in getting that. But yeah, we've had like we've had really good views with the uh, the stream for a while. Yo, by game. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, we grinded for a, a partner. Um. So yeah, I have creasing as a hotkey. But for people who don't know where creasing is, it's under um oh god, where is it? Windows, modeling editors, presets. And here you can create a, a set, like if you want this one, we can create a new set and give it a value. Uh, 10 is the highest, like the sharpest, and 0 is obviously nothing. For me, I don't really care about the sharpness, so I'm... I'll get rid of this actually. What I'm doing is I'm simply just using... I'm just activating creasing and then just dragging to the side, because I just don't... It doesn't matter too much to me as long as I can visually see it. Yeah, thanks Hugo, I appreciate it, man. You haven't watched the stream for a while? It's all good. So, if I want to match like that edge line, I usually just use insert edge loop delete, insert edge loop I mean, and put it equal distance, grab the edge I want to, oh, okay. It's not quads. Alright, now we'll try it. 
Oh, still more than quads. Is it here as well? Cool, and then just pull that out as far as we want. Yo, you go. Thanks for the 500 bits, man. I appreciate it. Since I know this is straight, but since we, we this isn't a um, these aren't quads anymore, I'm probably just going to go multi cut, cut across, grab this edge, and then scale it to sort of straight. So. This is... oh, not that one. Gonna make a free run? Yeah, thanks for tuning in, Hugo. I'll, uh, I'll catch you later, man. Go away, enjoy your dinner. So when it comes to this sort of stuff, I don't really care too much about the topology yet. It's still just about kind of blocking out where the uh, the panel lines are going to be. But yeah, depending on your supervisor, like some supervisors do literally do this on your mesh. <laughs> if that's the case, you you should match this stuff much more perfectly. But since I'm kind of the supervisor in this case, a lot of the time I usually try and show the concept next to it anyway. Like if you saw something like this, you might you would assume the panels line up much nicer. It's close enough. No one's really going to notice because no one's really going to see the concept when they watch the film. They're going to see this. So, but it depends on your it depends on the uh, your supervisor. So this is obviously close enough. Do you ever use F spy to help match the camera? I don't know what F spy is. To be fair, most of the stuff I usually do at work is more the concept-based stuff, so it's very vague anyway. So usually I wouldn't even get these panel lines that obvious. I would have to make up a lot of the stuff myself. Like a lot of the times I'll get like really vague gestural shapes, so there should be panels, but we don't know what it is. So I usually make the panel lines up myself as I go, but um, since I drew the panel lines here, I kind of know what I'm looking at. Best by a standalone, you drag some lines and place the camera for you. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, if we did really struggle with camera lineups, we can usually ask Layout to do it for us. Like, Layout have a lot of tools for doing that sort of stuff. Because, you know, setting up cameras is literally Layout's job. So they have a lot of tools to help them do that. But, yeah. With the concept stuff I usually get put into, it doesn't matter too much. Oh, that's right. Just hide everything. Yeah, I know we're talking about like hotkeys don't really matter too much, but if there's one hotkey I suggest people do have, it's isolate select as a hotkey. Like that is, I find isolate select so important to me because I use I use isolate select constantly while I'm working. So I intentionally went past that one. All right, we want to grab equal distance. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Nope. Oh. oh yeah, don't forget to save. I haven't been saving. That's not a good idea. And save incrementally as well. Like sometimes like I'll go up to like crazy amount of files for a single asset just because um it's always better to have it saved in increments. In case you mess something up.
But yeah, I'll, I'll usually do this quite a lot. Before I commit to paneling, I'll block in the panels with creasing. Just so I can get like a pretty like... You can get a pretty accurate representation of what your paneling will look like across the ship before you even do the paneling itself. So yeah, use creasing. Like creasing itself, I don't like as a modeling... Like it's not a substitute for triple edging, but it's really nice for modeling itself. How do you make a spaceship if the concept has a lot of curves? I use creasing even more then for blocking out the basic shapes. But um, I do have some other videos like that on my art station. Yo, how's it going? Um, t -t -t gives your camera stats like focal length. That's pretty cool. Alright, back we go. But yeah, isolate select is important to have as a hotkey. It'll it'll help you a lot. Um uh, Versioning controllers sounds so dirty. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty decent. This one I might run... I use Mesh Reduce a decent amount, just... Oh, that's way too much. Crank that down a bit. 5%. Uh, maybe 10% actually. A tool that's pretty cool is, say you have something like this, what you can do is you can grab your edge like that, and then you go control right, or oh, is it right click? Try to remember what the hockey is. Edit edge flow here. And what that will do is it will pop your edge between two different edges and it will maintain the curve. So if you do that once, and then you just keep pressing G. So G just redoes your last function. So what you can do is you can kind of just keep pressing G and it will kind of like spread your edges out, which is quite nice. And it will maintain the curve for you, which is very cool. Do you use Fusion 360? Um, I have Moi, but I don't use it too much. I've been playing more with like Blender's um, hard op stuff, for personal concept stuff. Alright, we can do this. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Alright, we, we want to get rid of this edge. That one's going to annoy us. And I might connect these two. So yeah, as you can see, we kind of, we took the original mesh from the concept mesh but we're kind of not really using it. We kind of just used it as like a base for everything else. Yeah, Moy is pretty cool for like that sort of stuff. So, start cutting some panels in. Where does that go? Oh, it doesn't reach the bottom. Okay. If I want to see what it looks like with this out of the way, I can always just hide it here and just see what it looks like. Oh, it's meant to go down. Oops. I'm a nice person. Why, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Yeah. So there should be one that cuts across here. What I might do is, like, if I want these lines to be perfectly straight, I'll probably just go to the side view. Maybe we can do something like, oh, actually, let's do this, actually. Let's go back to this. Make this one camera one, and then I'm going to make this one side. So now I can kind of see where... Uh, it's not... Uh, actually, I'll, I'll make it straighter. Just because it would probably annoy me. Cool. So I'm going to just do selection here so I can see roughly where it is. So about here. And I'm just going to use uh, multi-cut and hold shift and slice through it. And then we get roughly the right spot. Cool, so now we can go back to uh, front view. Yeah, no, sorry, I'm not like looking at the chat as much. We just have a, we have a very limited time frame to do this. But uh, yeah, this is kind of what work is like. We're trying to cut as many corners as we can and do it as fast as we possibly can. Let's do that one. Okay, that's easy. That one over here. Yeah, I might just get rid of all these actually. The curve at that angle is not that. Great, right, anyway. <laughs> when working with subd workflow, does the polygon count at render time matter? To an extent. I mean, like, you don't want to go too crazy. Like, you do want to be efficient. But then again, the polygon count doesn't matter as much for us. But in saying that, you don't want to make life difficult for everyone else. Like if that, like the the heavier your mesh is, the harder it is to take it into Mari to texture stuff like that. So like say for example, like I have a lot of GAC and detail here, but there's no point of putting heaps of GAC and detail right here because that's not going to help anyone. But it's going to I'm going to piss the texture artist off because the texture artist now needs to deal with all this gack that no one sees. There's stuff like that as things to be considerate about. But as far as the actual polygon count itself goes, it doesn't matter too much. And also, there's an edge that runs along it. Okay. So that's this one. Oh, okay. In that case, ooh, I need to definitely fix this first. I'll probably fix the topology in general a decent amount. This one's kind of screwed up. Oh. What about the carpet? I mean, that was in Clarice. That doesn't matter too much. Clarice can just eat polygons. So... If I want to maintain like this curve, I'm going to use the equal distance and start closer to the edge and then pull it out. And that will maintain that edge much nicer. Yeah. It's not the best, but we can modify it later. To be fair, we probably need to modify this anyway. It's not super clean. But still, for now, we'll uh, increase that. Yeah, okay. Cutting cam uh, sorry, weren't cutting panels at such a low level sub D result in pinching on curved surfaces? To an extent, but the, one of the benefits of using creasing is that the edges won't move. 
So we can use, this is a workflow I use quite often. Like if I want, I mean the panels themselves aren't too bad, but if I wanted to, I could take this edge. I mean, I could take this and subdivide it. And now you'll see we have much better topology, but things haven't moved. And then we can break this up and then sub triple edge that. I mean, we'd have to fix things that broke like that broke. But that's why creasing is also handy for paneling because it means the basic shape, we can subdivide it and then split this up. So that's probably what we will do later. But what you are saying is right. We will cause pinching if it's too low poly. But we, I always work super low poly with creasing at the start. How do you know when to detach panels from each other? I mean, it also depends on how you want to do the panels. Technically, whenever you want, really. I always think it's much easier to break these into separate objects than to, like, cut grooves in and, like, do recesses and stuff like that because panels aren't like that anyway. Like, panels are individual pieces of metal. So might as well just build them as individual pieces of metal. Oh my god, we've almost been going for two hours already. Um, is it easy to maintain a work-life balance? No, it is not. <laughs> Do you find yourself working, thinking about work often when you're off? Uh, yeah, I never stop working, thinking about work ever, unfortunately. Actually, it's not bad. Like, it's not necessarily that you don't stop thinking about work. It's more like, I might look at a car and be like, oh, it's a nice shape. It depends what you do, though. I mean, like, it's... I imagine it would be much worse for, say, for example, a lighter, because lighter will always be looking at lighting. It's the same way, like, if I walk down the street and I look at the shape of a car, I might think that's a pretty cool shape. Like, stuff like that. But it's not... It's not necessarily that I never stop thinking of work itself. Like, 3D, it's more like I'm just looking at the world around me with a different eye than most people would, if that makes sense. But yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, let's see, we have... So we've kind of blocked out most of the paneling already, which is pretty cool. So let's see what this actually looks like. So we have all this stuff here. I might combine this into one mesh, just to make it more organized. Oh, all the groups didn't disappear. What these are... Oh. So at the moment, this is kind of what our spaceship is looking like. Oh. Obviously very early days, but we can already kind of see like the basics of like how the paneling looks. Oh, this is obviously wrong, but um, what I might do is I'm going to duplicate this, go negative one, pull this down here and get rid of this. Also, when I'm in the early blocking stage, I'll put two-sided lighting on, so I just don't have to deal with that. Oh, we've kept the, uh, we kept the glass inside. Put that into the L group. Oh, we've got this one as well. I've left it in the group, that's why. But yeah, just a heads up, this sub D kit is actually for sale on my Gumroad. So if you were interested in picking up the kit, you can always go grab it. It does come with awesome UVs. Where are the UVs? I say that, but there's no UVs popping up. There you go. It does, the kit comes with nice, efficient, clean UVs. So uh, this is one of the reasons why yeah, I thought I would do this kit, not this kit, I would do this spaceship for the Autodesk streams. Because if we do decide to do UVs, at least all the complex stuff has UVs already, like the kit bash stuff.
UVs for free. I mean, the UVs come with the cost of the kit itself, but yes, the UVs are there. So yeah, all this stuff is UV'd. I can actually probably show you. Um, that station. Yeah, so this kit here is this one. Comes with uh, glorious, efficient, clean UVs. Nice models, nice topology. Yeah, that's on my uh, Gumroad if people are interested. Alright, I'm going to take a quick uh, two minute break again. Make sure you get up, have a walk around, have a stretch. Be back in a sec. Yeah, we've already been going for two hours, and we have 122 people here. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone for uh, for tuning in. I I greatly appreciate it. Speaking of Kibash, you want something for a gun? I mean, you're the only one that did it, so sure, I can I can give you something. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can give you I can give you this kit bash. What you're saying is super helpful. Awesome. Just heard give kit bash. Yeah, I, I said I'll, I'll give you this kit if you want. Since you're the, you're the only one that did the rogue. Uh, with sub D workflow, is it a good idea to cut off edge loops where you don't need them or will the result in more UV stretching? Um, well, the point of the edge loops is to stop the UV from stretching to begin with. So, are you talking about with things like cylinders and stuff? Are you talking about like with this sort of stuff? Like the purpose of these edge loops is to stop, is to limit the stretching. Is this kind of what you're referring to? Ah, oh, so there's meant to be different things in here. Oh, that's easy. We can...
This is why I like two edge loops so much, because I can just select these two edges and then press Shift D, and then we have our edge loop selected. Very, very convenient. And then I'll just bevel it, turn the chamfer off, and then we have our sub D mesh. We probably don't need anywhere near that depth though, so I'll probably just do this. Get rid of those. Always make sure you delete what you don't need, because this is just wasted UV space and topology. So we know the circle end. Oh god, we know the circle ends there. So just delete the circle there. I know some modelers don't do this, and it, it really annoys the texture artists. Like I'm, I'm good friends with a lot of texture artists, and they do tell me this stuff doesn't annoy them, because that means that's extra wasted like UV resolution for literally no reason. So yeah, make sure you. Delete the things you don't need. It's a texture artist will definitely like you if you do this. Do you look at all this resolution we save. Same would go with with this piece here. We don't really need any of that. I mean, this intersection itself is pretty bad. In that case, what I'd probably do is maybe maybe pull this in and make it flat scale like that that's going to be better anyway would this practice change for the model need to be destroyed at late date <coughs> sorry okay if it needs to be destroyed and needs to be watertight, then yes, you need to leave it like that. That conversation should happen at the very start before you build the mesh. Sometimes what we do is, we haven't done it often, but sometimes what we've done before is we would put, like say for example, this would be a good example by the way, Say you could have two versions of the mesh. You could have the, the effects one and then the, the standard high res one. So what you could do is have something like this. You could have it closed off for effects purposes. And then you can put this as a new shader called... Um... Wait, where's the shader? Oh, did I not do it? Uh, big face. So what you can do is you can assign a new material to this, and then you could call this like a f um, just call it effects or whatever, make a different color. So what you have is you'd have technically two versions of the same asset, I and mean, we don't do this that often, but it is a method. And then what you can is you can use this the hyper shade to select. You can select the, everything on the mesh that's not that, and then delete it. So that's another workflow you had if you want to be super optimized. Usually it doesn't get to that point, but that's a way of having two different things. You can leave it in try. Yeah, tries are okay, especially if it's not seen. I would always much rather have a try than an end gone. I'll show you at the very end how I deal with that sort of stuff. Like you can search for n-gons pretty easily on the mesh. Yeah, we don't need this either anymore. Um, that. So I might make another group just called L Mech. I usually just break up my, I usually break up my mesh into this sort of stuff. Like we'd have like Mech, we have panels, we'd have like, you know, glass, rubber, stuff like that. Uh, did I miss anything? Um, is it a good idea to keep the edge loops all the way through? Are you talking about like... Are you saying terminating edge loops is a bad idea if you don't want texture stretching? I kind of don't get what you mean. 
Like usually when you terminate an edge loop, it just leads into another edge loop. Or say you had something like... I'm trying to, trying to guess what you actually mean. Are you talking about like... Say you had something like... Oh, it didn't work. Are you talking about like if you had like an edge loop running, you'd do something like this. Is this what you mean by terminating an edge loop? Because if this sort of thing depends entirely on like what you're doing. It depends entirely on the mesh itself, where what the topology flow is like. Because if, if, if this was the example, I would just straight up just have it run straight through. But there are times where I do terminate edge loops. So it does depend entirely on what you're doing. How many layers did an asset like Transformers end up having in Outliner? Do you mean like with the grouping? It's still pretty basic. You'd have like, I mean, all my assets in general don't really have many layers. Usually like you would have like standard grouping would be like, you know, the fingers are within the hand group. The hand group was in the, the elbow group, the elbow group within the shoulder group, shoulder group within the torso. Actually, no, the shoulder and torso would be separate. Like, that would all be in the left group. Like, stuff like that. So you only group within group, if it makes sense. Yo, willpower is all. Thanks for the follow. Sponsored stream, the reason we keeping the language so clean. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta chill. Chill with the swearing. After. <laughs> Maintain my Australianness. I have to hold it down a bit. Oh, I th th I would never ever do that. <laughs> oh, the top, the top image. I mean, oh, I I wouldn't do any of these. There's no, there's no reason to to terminate edges like that. Oh, it depends. It depends what it's flowing into. But I mean, you can sometimes terminate edge loops. It just depends. Like, it, it depends entirely on the mesh itself. Like, if you do want to terminate, like, like to one, like, three to one, I personally am a fan of this one. Um, personally, this is my preference from, like, three to one is this. I know some people have the diamond, and to be fair, the diamond kind of annoys me. <laughs> so say for example, what the diamond is, is... It's that? This one kind of annoys me. Because say, for example, you are reducing the polygon count of this one. Like, with this one, all you have to do is just get rid of these edges, and you're done. With this one, you'd have to, like, manually cut that to there. You'd have to delete these. And then you have, have like, see how much easier one is to change than the other? I'm just not really a fan of the... Uh, I've never really liked the diamond. And then what makes it even worse is if we do this... And we start bending it. I mean, obviously, it's it's a bit low poly, but like the bent, like this is a really weird shape. I mean, yeah, if it had a bit more polygons, it would be a better example. But usually, this won't break as much as this one. This is a very weird shape, so never have this on a curved surface because it's just gonna. Would the diamond mess with UV stretching? I mean, not particular. Non neither of them would change the stretching too much. I would, they would change a little bit, but nothing too crazy. This is nothing. This won't do anything to your UVs. It's 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 the mesh itself which is the problem, and it doesn't matter how good your UVs are if your mesh is trash. So I would always much rather people did this one than this, one. especially on curved surfaces. 
that's just my personal opinion. I know a lot of other people do like the diamond. I don't I don't know why people like the diamond, but that's just my thoughts. So we have the general idea of the paneling, which is pretty cool. Maybe we can we still have fifty minutes. We can do some kit bashing stuff. So usually when I first start an asset, I usually kind of pick the low hanging fruit. Doing stuff like that gives you confidence. It makes you more motivated to the work. So like I know I have like these sorts of things, so we can kind of start kit bashing this sort of stuff. Usually like say for example, I know I'm fortunate I'm fortunate because I know I have these pieces in this order. But like at work I would just find similar pieces that look very similar to it and just kit bash those together. But um I already have this as a thing, so why not just use it? Of course, we'll probably have to do like some modifying to make things, you know, fit nicer and stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah, just throw some pieces in. Job done. Now, I just conveniently happen to have a uh, a production ready version of this, which is also partly why I chose to do this vehicle, because um we could fit it within the time frame. Oh, it's not perfect. It's a bit. Some pieces have moved a bit. Close enough. Let's be real though. Oh actually some pieces are on top, so this is this is unique as well. Okay. So there you go, never mind. We do have to do some actual kit bashing. This is why kit bashing is so important. Cause can you imagine having to manually retopo this? Or we can just throw some pieces in there, which look the same, and job done. Yo, how's it going, Corvo? We'll finish today? Yeah, no chance. Yo, man, how's it going? Yeah, Yo, you should all follow uh, DMAX Art as well. He's another uh, another dude in Vancouver that uh, streams on Twitch as well. Yeah, I'll just put that there. What's this at the top? Okay, so there are some custom pieces. So you... Actually, is that it there? You get to see we will do some proper kit bashing. Like, we do need to fill a lot of gaps. Is that... Oh, it's not exactly the same. It's similar. Actually, we have this one. I know we have this one. This one here. To be fair, like a lot of the smaller details don't even really matter that much. It's more like as long as they have like the same feel and the shapes are similar, that's all that really matters. Like say for example, uh, the concept mesh I know has like these this shape in it. But no one's actually going to see it. I have this on my sub D version. No one's really going to see that in the film. And no one's going to notice that's slightly different. So stuff like that doesn't really matter too much. Oh, I've noticed the whole thing in general is actually slightly different. That's cool. We can recycle and kitbash this differently. Alright, in that case, we'll, we'll break some stuff off. Pull that off here. Yeah, we can do some actual kit bashing now. So, I know we need the circle. Oh, the whole top is gone. Alright. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to group it. Move it off to the side. We can probably use it somewhere else. I know that piece is that piece there. But... I don't like how this piece is on the concept. I'll probably alter it a bit. So we know big pipe here. I think that is that pipe there.
Yeah, so in general, I do tend to bounce around what I do while I'm working as well. Like in case, like, I get bored of something, I do like to change. Like if I do just paneling non-stop for like days, it might get boring. So I might take like an hour or two break just to do some kit bashing. Okay, we can get rid of that. Just to keep things more interesting. Like I would much rather like keep up my momentum by changing what I'm doing than um, start from scratch. I'm not start from scratch. Then just keep doing the uh, the same thing I'm doing for weeks or days. It is good to mix it up every now and then. So yeah, as soon as I match the general gist of what was there, I just delete from the concept what what was there before. So a lot of this stuff we can probably get rid of. There you go. So also you can see while I, I keep the color of the mesh gray and the concept one red, so it's really easy to see what is what is concept and what is uh, production at the moment. Oh, is that there? Convenient. And also the convenient thing about having all this stuff is it's all uh, UV. Like this kit bash stuff, I would always try and make sure you UV it first. It will save you a lot of time. Also, with like sometimes it's also best not to follow the concept exactly because you can see this piece is just randomly just thrown in. But I kind of want it to match the panel better, so I I might alter the angle so it's better that way. Yo, 135 people here. Yo, thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. I hope you are enjoying this sort of content. Well, Jesus, let me pass on you. But yeah, if people have, like, questions, obviously feel free to ask. Like, don't... Like, that's the whole point of these, uh... These streams is for educational purposes. You don't want to hijack the stream? Wait, what'd you do? If you don't have the awesome sub D kit bash greeble kits, does you have to retopo all the small details of the concept art? Well that's the thing, like if you if you don't have this sorts of kit, yeah, you have to retopo it all. But when you retopo it all, you grab those pieces, save them into another file, and that's now your kit. So your kit can grow over time. You marry me. <laughs> yeah, the easiest thing to kit bash is usually pipes. Like once you have like a set of pipes or cables, you're usually kind of pretty set. You can usually kind of get away with just using the same pipes over and over. I mean like stuff like these penetrations and stuff, we need to we do need to make sure that's not like that in the final model. So we might change that stuff later. Yeah, the mesh in general looking pretty clean so far. Yo, no worries. But yeah, if you guys have any feedback on, like, the way the stream is run, we do have 10 of these streams, so let me know. And we can um, make adjustments for the streams in the future. All the streams will be up on my YouTube, so we will have, like, a full series. Go CDA, 3D Live, um, and Zakafra. Thanks for the follow. But yeah, if you guys have any feedback or questions, please let me know. Ooh.
You have feedback, more streams? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be 10 of them. There'll, there'll definitely be more. Um, what I might do is I'm going to subdivide this, but I'm going to clean the topology very quickly. If I smooth this. Yeah, it's kind of break a bit, but we can fix that later. And what we can do to hold it is you can just do this. We can just like, come on, Maya, extrude all this down. And I'm going to just crease the edges like this. So this, oh, whoops. All right. Just merge those. Just make sure it's pretty good elsewhere. All right, let's try that again. Cleaning the topo, first thing you do is make a try. Oh, God. Oh, no, I didn't fix this one as well. So yeah, this is one of the things I do like about creasing is this sort of stuff. Um, oh no, I changed my keyboard. Whoops. Uh, we just went. Um, great to find 3D arts, a professional. Cheers. Yeah, so now what we have is we have this, right? Oh, we need to make sure that's all good. So that the depth is just temporary. It's just because I want to. Whoa, okay. It's just because I want to maintain the sharp edges. So yeah, it doesn't move. What I might do is I might just chuck. Just to be a bit more, a bit more uniformed as well, something like that, and then subdivide it. So now we have like a nicer, cleaner panel. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Oh, that's right. This happens. Some, this does happen when you subdivide, it, obviously, but um, not too hard to fix. I mean, I could just generally show you how I do paneling right now with this panel. Why not? But it's not going to take too long to do. So, firstly, I don't want to have intersections like that. Like, you, you really don't want to have stuff like this. Intersections aren't good. Do something like... I'm going to angle it very slightly. It's, no one will probably notice this, but I'll notice it. Oh, it pops out here. How often do I use Boolean tools? Um, sometimes. Like, a lot of times I'll usually get the shapes I want and not care about topology. Like, I always care about topology at last. Like, I'll get the shape I want first and then worry about topology later. So, this is pretty much ready to be turned into a panel. So we can do that sort of stuff now, I guess. I would usually just like... Oh wait, no, I didn't sharpen this one yet. So to do paneling, I usually just do this. Uh, extract faces. And I'm just pressing G to repeat the function.
What he has talking about? Cool. All right. So everything should be broken and up into its own thing. Oh, aside from this one. What are we making? We're making spaceships. Well, some some sort of vehicle. Nothing too important. Yeah, it's nothing nothing that special. This panel I might leave to last because I want to have a nicer integration of whatever this thing is. I'll probably do that later. But I can show you kind of generally how I deal with panels. So usually what I do is I work out the topology on top. Actually, I don't even need to do that one. I'll do that differently. Go on, undo. I'm going to save it now as well. <laughs> Make sure you save your files. This one might be a bit too far away. Like this point, I mean. But it might be okay. We'll see how it goes. We can always modify it later if we need to. Yeah, it's pretty bad actually. I'm just going to use slide edge just to bring it closer. And then you can always just grab this one and then do the. Uh, oh. Is it shift right click? Uh, edit edge flow to pop it in. That one's pretty easy to do. So, in general, that's all you kind of need. So, then I just. Uh, Root edge. So, our panels probably won't be that thick. Something like this, maybe. Yeah, some of that should be fine. Oh, that's not good. You can do all the panels at once, but I'm just going to do them individually. Then I'm just going to select all my edges like that. And then just uh, bevel. Turn the chamfer off, and then we have our nice paneling so we need some supporting edge loops like here this one's not too bad i might just bring it over anyway but yeah what i'll do now is i usually grab all the edges when you have like a triple edge like this you can go shift right click soften soften edge and it will give you this so now you can see where your panels are without having to subdivide. Oh, speaking of subdivision, we need a supporting edge layer. So now it, we can visualize the panels pretty easily, which is pretty cool. Oh, yes, right? Channel's got the train. Yo, how's it going, man? Yeah, and then we just repeat that process. I'll probably just do it to these ones for now. I'll probably... You can extrude them all at the same time, which he would help for keeping it consistent. But I mean, doing by eye is not going to be the end of the world either. This sort of one's probably the easiest to do, just because it, it literally is a square. We might get a bit of pinching here, but um, we'll deal with that in a sec. So I do like to go to wireframe mode and check out how it lines up with the other panel, just so I can make sure the um, the what's it called the bevel is very similar. Yeah, this bit here is going to pinch a bit. We'll see how it looks. Probably going to be pretty bad, to be fair. We can maybe we can fix this later, though. Yeah, there's a bit of pinching there. But I'll leave that to later. 
Like the thing is, like when you have such limits of time as well, you kind of don't want to spend too much time worrying about things. Because it could go to the end, like there's no point making everything perfect, but then half your spaceship isn't even built. So like I know that will, uh, that will be something to fix later on, but for now, fix it in comp. I mean, it's going to be motion blurred behind smoke and fire and several pixels on the screen anyway, so I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, we can worry about that stuff later. This is kind of what I mean by like picking battles. Like we can keep going and refining things to the end. But we need to focus on getting most of the work done first. And then we can worry about that stuff later. What are you guys talking about? You kind of interested to see how I fix it later? Yeah, you gotta gotta tune in for the streams. Yeah, soften edges. We can kind of see roughly where the uh, yeah you know, too slippy. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, as soon as someone showed me the, the bevel tool and not needing to worry about like triple edging, God, it, it sped up my workflow so much. Like the fact that it even deals with those corners for you is awesome. But point three. Of course, we need to make sure we maintain um, edges. I might just add an extra one in here. There, there. Pinched. Oh, do you guys want like a pinch to move? <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so we have like 13. We have 13 emotes now, so if you guys have any emotes, let me know. If you have any emote ideas, I mean, let me know. You guys want like a pinched emote. Yeah, we have the industry standard emote now. Just to rub some salt in. <laughs> uh, so good. Yeah, it's IS for industry standard. <laughs> uh, good fun. <laughs> All the Myers in the chat, that's so funny. I thought, you, I thought you guys would appreciate that, so I added the industry standard emote, which is the Maya logo. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. So yeah, what I'm doing now is kind of the reverse. Instead of doing the topology on top, I did the bevel first, and then I'm just fixing topology. <laughs> Jesus, all the Myers in the chat now is so funny. We also have the three times faster blender remote as well for people in the chat. Yeah, just a reminder, this is sponsored by Autodesk, so definitely shout out to them for uh, supporting me on this and letting me just do my thing, which is uh, very cool of them. <laughs> oh, the Myers. <laughs> But yeah, we're going for two and a half hours, so we'll go for 25 more minutes, and then that will probably be the end of the uh, the very first Autodesk stream. So these streams, we'll be holding them on 
Saturday at this time, every single week for the next five weeks will just be the Autodesk streams. And every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, we'll also be doing it. So that way, more people can see the Autodesk streams. It's going to be more diverse uh, audiences. Yeah, as you guys can see, we can see the paneling quite easily without even needing to preview the smooth, which is very handy. It just keeps your scene pretty low poly for while you're working. To remind me to fix the pinching, I mean, you can do that at the end. Yo, I'm gonna have a quick two minute break and then we'll uh we'll do the last twenty five minutes of the stream. and wake me wear an Autodesk t-shirt. <laughs> Wait, what did you add? Oh. Oh, uh, God. Wait, we need to give the bot subs? Really? So we can use the emotes. That's so funny. That's pretty funny. Oh, we didn't... Oh, we didn't do this one yet. Alright. So what I'll probably do is like, it doesn't make too much sense if there's just these, oh, some pinching. Right, we'll worry about that later. It doesn't make too much sense, these panels are kind of just floating, so I might do like another sub layer underneath that, but we can worry about that later. It's that sort of stuff that we have to do quite a lot. Like from the concept, we just don't see it, but it kind of makes no sense to have floating panels. So we might create some sort of like structural support under here later. Yeah, so apparently the bot needs the bot needs to be a sub to use the emotes. That's pretty funny.
How much time did it take you to model that sub D kit bash? Also, where did you get the ref for it? So, the sub D kit bash is kind of just a sub D version of a kit bash I already have. And I, for reference for it, I just looked at stuff online. As in, like, oh, it's the most generic comment I've ever said. I mean, I just looked at, like, um, like in, like, you can look at things like car factories and look at, like, the robots that build cars, stuff like that, for mechanical parts. Some stuff was anime-related stuff. Like, no joke, like, um, if people have seen Cowboy Bebop, they might have net recognized, I don't know if people would recognize this, but this is the console of their aircraft in Cowboy Bebop. I just thought it was a cool idea, cool shape, so I built it. These were some air conditioning vents I saw in another anime, and I just thought they looked like kind of cool sci-fi ventilation, just copied it. <laughs> so, like, you can find reference for this sort of stuff anywhere. Like, this stuff was based on... These are based on real things from the real world. Stuff like this is... But, oh, this is that piece we need. We'll steal it while we're here. But yeah, like, at the end of the day, the kit bash stuff is just shapes. Like, you can take anything and turn it into something else. So, uh, yeah, just keep your mind open with, like, uh, anything can kind of be kit bashable. Oh, I'll put this here for him. Can you stuff stuff from your own kit bash into work? Nah, no chance. You never... Firstly, you won't be able to get your own kit bash into work. Secondly, you would never want to. Because if you put your kit bash in at work, your work now ends your stuff. So, it's better just to never do that. Just keep it separate. Keep your personal stuff personal. So there's a bit of a pen like interact like penetration there, so we'll worry about that sort of stuff later. I feel that's a pretty standard practice. It's like we'll worry up we'll worry about it later if we have time. So let's see how the uh, the thing is looking so far. So we can grab all of this. Chuck it in the uh, the L mech. So if you think about it, the fact we already kind of have this after two hours is pretty cool. Like we already kind of have the foundation for the ship in two hours. So this is how we are able to save a lot of time at work. Is you know subtracting elements from the concept mesh. Being able to use like pre-existing parts, which is similar, to save time, stuff like that. The return of Red Man, yeah, we got the Red Man chilling here. <laughs> uh, would I ever model a Gundam if I was paid? Hell yeah. Why wouldn't I? I would love to make a Gundam. Um. We need to do a compilation of Andrew saying we'll worry about that later. I mean, that's that's VFX in a nutshell. <laughs> we have such limited time to do things. We have to be efficient and pick your battles. Like, we could, like, no, no joke. We could spend, like, two weeks trying to model this. Or we could just kit bash it. <laughs> kit bash it, save some time, get the general idea, and save the client a lot of money. <laughs> Studio is happy, client is happy, you're happy, you get to go on and do more spaceships later, so. Yeah. Being efficient is very key. Fix it in post? I mean, we are post. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, 15 more minutes, and then uh, we'll probably wrap up the stream. The ship is going to be rigged? No, I can't do rigging. <laughs> We might do UVs. I don't know if we will do UVs. It's just because we have a lot to manage. 
especially with all the kitbash parts. I mean, it is. This is already UV. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, look at that. nice topology. Wow, well, look at those UVs. So everything is already UV'd, but it, it still takes time to organize. We might be able to do a little bit of UVing, but we'll see. I'd rather focus on getting like a pretty good like production mesh. This is kind of how we use like the basic shape of the concept mesh to give us pretty decent like paneling and stuff. Can I go over that window shader? This one? What do you mean? What do you want to know about it? Looks like the snub fighter from Mandalorian that got blown up by X-Wings. I've never seen Mandalorian. You want to look at everything in the smallest detail? Yeah, you can't do that in VFX. Oh, my kitbash. Okay, no <laughs> worries. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll shoot you a message afterwards, man. But um, yeah, as far as like the interior goes, we're gonna keep it like very basic. Well, this is the first cube I've made today. <laughs> like, I'm, we're gonna keep the interior very basic. We only kind of want something to um. Yeah, you know, we just need something in there. Nothing too crazy. The seat would be like bare minimum, just like a silhouette. But this, this sort of stuff happens quite a lot as well. Like we might get a concept, but we have no interior. We need to make up the interior ourselves. Usually if we don't get an interior, it's usually because the interior doesn't really matter too much. So as long as we just, I shouldn't have done that. As long as it just doesn't, as long as it looks kind of cool, it's all right. And as long as like a, a person can actually like fit inside it. Usually you could like just grab like an existing chair or something. I I don't have a chair. So we can make up like a chair a chair silhouette later. Did I model the interior of the warbird? Um I modified it slightly but I didn't model it. And Andrew's my hockeys. Oh, you got a link to my hockeys. Cool. As long as you can fit Tyrion Lannister in, you're fine. I might consider more about like making this a bit nicer now. Hockeys? Oh, you've got an actual thing to my hockeys. Awesome, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, for the last um, the last ten fifteen minutes, might as well just do this paneling as well. Redirect this down here. Honestly, like I do really enjoy doing topology, just because I. I it's kind of like a like a puzzle to me. I like trying to be like efficient and stuff like that. But you know, at at home it's nice to not have to worry about it. I think that's why like at work I'll do I'll do production topology and then at work at home I'll do personal I won't do production topology, just you know, mix it up a bit.
Yeah, Contigi, thanks for the uh Thanks for the tier one, I appreciate it. Sorry, we don't have um we don't have notifications up at the moment. Just to keep it a bit more uh, whoa. We had some uh weird endgons. Just to make it a bit more official. Oh shit, I didn't oops, over the swearing. I didn't maintain this sharp edge with the crease. Professionalism. Ah, uh, the stream is usually pretty chill. We were we were a bit more professional this time, I guess, maybe. You kind of like not seeing the alerts every two or three minutes? That's fair enough. I mean, the things like the alerts, they're more, they're fun for like engagement with the chat and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's also why we didn't have the, uh, we didn't have the chat on the stream as well. <laughs> People might be spamming interesting stuff. I kind of just want to get, I want to turn this, oh shit. Not that one. Oh, my undo's not working. That's not good. Pull this back out. I kind of just want to have it a bit more, um, I guess, unified to this sort of scale. I might just get rid of some of these. Oh, I suppose there's no way around that, really. That one will always have to be in. Ah, to be fair, that'll be fine. Not end of the world. Your opinion will change very fast when we get to work? Opinion of what? So yeah, now we're just going to do the same thing we did last time, just uh, extract faces. Alright, so if people don't know what this menu is, it's just shift right click, and then I pick uh, extract faces. So I very, very rarely look up here, or I, and I never use any, um, I don't have any shelf. I always use everything with spacebar or right click. About how much you like doing top topo? I mean, I still do enjoy doing topo. It's just nice not having to worry about it. So I just want to, I'm just keeping an eye on like the thickness over there just so I can kind of match it. I'll show you this, which is pretty cool. So if I press like um, like F10 or something, go to like edge mode. If you go here to select, uh, where is it? Use constraints. Then go next selection, and then come down to geometry angle. And you set up your settings something like this, and then you try and do a selection. If you have like the your angles set up correctly, it'll select all the edges and not the middle ones, so it goes based on angle, which is very cool. Obviously we need that angle in the middle, but I'll do that one last. And then we can just bevel. Oh wait, it's not going to do this, isn't it? So if I bevel this, right, and then try and alter it, it will only work on the last one. What we can kind of do is I might just go mesh, combine them, and then try that again. My settings should still already be there. So it will select the edges again. And then theory, if I bevel this, I can control them all at the same time. Which is very cool. Like this. And then turn chamfer off again. And then we get our nice um, 
Oh, there's one edge that didn't work. But that's fine. Oh, this one didn't work either. It's cool. But we can go and adjust that. Oh, that's right. Don't forget, if you use that, you have to turn it off. You have to um, go nothing. Or you won't be able to select everything. But now we can. But now all you can do is I can just go select all that, extract faces. Oh, what? It didn't work. Oh, okay. Maybe not. I thought I was being clever, but I guess it's merged them. Um, you cannot personalize? Yeah, you can personalize. All right, never mind. I thought I was being clever, but I guess, <laughs> I guess not. Why did it merge them? All right, whatever. All right, ignore that. <laughs> we'll have to just do it manually. That's really strange. I thought that would work. Yeah, you, you can personalize stuff at work. Like if you want to have, like if I didn't like the background color, I can change that. Like it doesn't matter. You can set up your own personalized shelves. Like, you know, I, I have my own custom hotkeys, stuff like that. Like you can, you can do all that sort of stuff. You obviously just can't bring in like dodgy stuff. <laughs> Background colors, Alt B. No, no, no. I mean, like, actually, you can change everything in Maya. I, I mean, I know Alt B changes background color. I mean, like, you can make the color literally anything you want. You can make it red if you want, or pink. You can do whatever you want. Oh, shit. We only got five more minutes left. All right. For the last five minutes, we'll just do, like, some Q&A. Does anyone have any, like, general questions or, like, things they were hoping to see in the upcoming streams? Yeah, just a reminder, these, are, these streams are obviously sponsored by Autodesk. We will do them for the next five weeks, two times a week. Everything will always go up onto um, my YouTube. So after this, I'll upload this to YouTube. And then we'll have a full series of streams. And then hopefully we can try and... Hopefully we can build this in 30 hours. In sub D, do you always need supporting edges? Yeah, for sure, totally. If you don't have supporting edges, your, your shape will collapse. Um, from what your professor told you. Oh. You don't work on the same workstation? Yeah, you do. If you, um, at work, you, so when you, when you work at a studio, you have a desk and you always sit at your desk. There's no one, no one's going to come in and steal your computer. Well, someone might if they change your computer over, but. Is a couch hard surface? I'm not really capable of answering that question. How do you do those thick edges? Are you talking about the creasing? These ones. So these edges are actually creases. So what a creasing is, is it stops an edge from collapsing if it's subdivided. Like you'll see, say for example, we have this cube here. I'm not cube, this sphere. Make it like 10. So we have this, right? If you press 3, it, it smooths and claps. But if you add a crease, it maintains that sharp edge. So you can like do stuff like this. I mean, you can literally see the crease activate. <laughs> it will preserve those, uh, those edges for you. So that's all the, the, the thick edges are. They're just creasing. But I use creasing to do paneling. So that's what I do with these edges. These creases, so the creases are the foundation for when I subdivide the mesh and do the paneling like this. 
but it's also a very clear representation of like where my paneling is. Oh yeah, so once you do the once you do the um once you subdivide the thing, we uh we don't need the creasing anymore. So I get rid of the creasing. Goodbye creasing. Yeah, so now you're just left over with the paneling. But uh yeah, let's uh let's look for someone to raid. But yeah, don't forget the next stream will be on Wednesday at 8 p.m. We'll be doing more obviously continuing on from where we are. Oh Arvid is on, we can we can check him out. But yeah, so Wednesdays from now on. Yes, thanks Autodesk. But yeah, so Wednesdays, 8 p.m. We'll be doing it. 8 p.m. my time, PST. And Saturdays, 12 p.m. PST. For the next five weeks, we'll all be this. I might still do other streams based on whatever I feel like doing. But the next few will be the Autodesk streams. So yeah. If you have any feedback... <laughs> You love Autodesk. <laughs> if you have any feedback or any questions, you know, reach out, let me know, and we can make adjustments for the stream. Maya Master Race. I, I like that, Chernobyl. So, can we get some Mayas in the chat before we, before we bounce? Yeah, we have, we have, the, we have the industry standard emote now. Which is the the Maya look? <laughs> uh, so good. All right. Oh, hi, Volpsy. Yeah, how's it going? Cool. Let's uh, we'll head over to Arvid. <laughs> all the all the Mayas. So good. <laughs> uh, so good. All right. We'll head over to um, we'll head over to Arvid now. So Arvid is a look dev artist at Industrial Light and Magic. We actually worked together, even though I'd never actually met him. We we're in the same building, but I never saw him. But yeah, we'll head over to Arvid now. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. If not Wednesday, I'll see you on Saturday. So take it easy, everyone. I'll, uh, I'll catch you later. <laughs>